Condition, what's the probability density function of a conditional probability like this? What is it? I mean, just follow your nose here. It's the probability of x and x greater than k divided by probability x greater than k. If you like, you can even you can even keep this as let's keep this as x for right now. All I'm saying here is integrate over x. This means integrate over x. This means integrate over x. Now, let's write one other step. Now let's deal with this condition. What does this condition say? This says this condition that x is greater than k. So this is equal to the integral from k to whatever x. <coughs> so we've conditioned that x greater than k. Now what do I want? I want just a probability density function times the probability density function dx divided by probability x greater than k. Now let me, let me just say something to you right now. You absolutely need to know this if you have your calculus skills in order. This is a constant. This is a constant. I mean, it's a number. What kind of number? Less than 1, greater than 0. It's a probability. I mean, factor it out. k is a constant, right? So this is equal to the whole thing divided by probability x greater than k. So, so, think about what we have now. Think about what we have. We have this. We just found that. We found the density function of x. We don't have this yet, but we will. I want to now concentrate on the numerator. Let's focus on this. So we're kind of breaking this down into parts. We're going to find this now. That's what we're after. Let's do that. This is going to take a little bit of work. You got to do some substitutions. All right, it's fun stuff. It's just some calculus. That's it. All right. So now, what do we have? What is this equal to? Remember, we found the PDF. Let me write it. So what we have is the following. What we have is that this is equal to the integral from k to infinity x, what's the PDF of this? Let me just make sure, I don't want anyone to be confused, let me just write this out real quick, just write it out one more time, okay? Now let's write it out. Now let's say, what is the PDF of x? Remember, capital X is the stock price at time t, it's log normally distributed, we found its probability density function, so we're going from k to infinity of x times, now the density function of x, we found it. It's 1 over x times 1 over v square root 2 pi e to the negative 1 half times, what was it, ln x minus mu over v squared dx. What a nightmare as of right now. Let's make a substitution. What's the only natural u substitution you can do? I mean, if you were going to u sub something, what would you do? You'd let u be this. Let u be the argument of the exponential e. So u, so we're going to let u equal ln x minus mu over v. We're going to end up needing to solve for x because, look, I have an x right here. Okay, I have an x inside the integrand. Now, you might be thinking these will cancel. I mean, you could cancel those, but... Um, we're going to need that for convenience. So, what is x equal to? Solve this equation for x. This says that, um, in other words, x is equal to um, x is equal to e to the mu plus v u. Just algebra. We need to change the bounds of integration. If x is k, what is u going to be? So if x equals k, u is going to be ln k minus mu over v. And what happens if x tends to infinity? If x tends to infinity, then u also tends to infinity, clearly, right? Because ln of ln tends to infinity as x tends to infinity, so that whole thing does as well. Make the substitution. In fact, store this somewhere because I need board space, right? So store that. 
what is this going to be? This is going to be the integral from k gets replaced with this ln k minus mu over v to infinity. What's going on inside? Well, x gets replaced with that. This is e to the mu plus vu. Um, this is still going to be 1 over 2 pi, so times 1 over, sorry, square root 2 pi. And then it's going to be e to the what? e to the negative 1 half u squared du. I claim that that is what we get after the substitution. Um, yes. This still doesn't look good. This still doesn't look good. So what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to do some um, side work here. Look at these powers of e here. We all know algebra. It's all just easy peasy, right? I mean, if I multiply two uh, exponential expressions with the same base, I add the exponents. So I want to concentrate on the sum of these. So let's note. This is my little side work or remark. So notice. Note the following, that I have this. I have mu plus vu minus 1 half u squared. I'm going to do your least favorite thing you did in algebra, which is complete the square. This is equal to the following. This is mu minus a half quantity u squared minus 2 uv. Let's just leave it like that. So these are equal. Just factor out negative a half, switch the order. These are absolutely equal. This is equal to mu minus a half. Now let's complete the square. If I complete the square here, I take half the middle and square it. So minus, so half of 2v, that's the coefficient from the variable u, half 2v is v, square it is v squared. So this is 2uv plus v squared. I can't just randomly add something on in here. What did I add on? I really subtracted, I, I added a negative a half times v squared. So to balance it out, I need to add a half times v squared. Boy, oh boy. This is equal to mu plus a half v squared. So what did I do? I brought this together with this. This factors. That's the whole damn point of completing the square. If you get something that is a perfect square trinomial, that's the whole point. That's the whole purpose. So this is minus, this is minus a half u minus v squared. So look at what I've done. I've taken this, which is the power of e over here, the power of e, and I've gotten this. So let's go back to the drawing board here. Let's, let's give ourselves some room. Keep this in mind, and let me erase this. We just did the algebra to convince ourselves. Better be convinced. Okay, so now, this is equal to this business. So let's, let's be convinced here. This is equal to the following. This is e, so this is a constant, Okay, so um, what I'm gonna write is this, is e to the mu plus one half v squared times the integral of ln k minus mu over v to infinity. What's inside is one over square root two pi e to the negative one half u minus v squared du. Man, man, okay, you better, you better see what I did here, right? I mean, I plugged this in here and I factored out the constant portion. Just algebra, just algebra. Now we need to do one more substitution. One more u sub. Let's get rid of our old u sub. We're gonna let now w we're going to let w be the only thing that makes sense for it to be this thing. So we're going to let w equal u minus v, dw equals du, right? u is the variable. <coughs> okay. Um, if u is this, so if u equals ln k minus mu, 
over v. What is w equal? w is u minus v, so it's u minus v. So w is equal to, now, more algebra, ln k minus mu over v minus v. If I take this and minus v, I need an LCD. The LCD is v, so this is equal to minus v squared. Yes, that's right. If u goes to infinity, w goes to infinity. u tends to infinity, w tends to infinity. Clearly. All right, if u goes to infinity, w goes to infinity. Oh man, oh man, all right, this is what we got. This is equal to the following. This is e to the mu plus one half v squared. What is my integral now? My integral is this. It's the integral of, well, integral from, this is my lower bound. So this is ln of k minus mu minus v squared all over v to infinity of one over square root two pi e to the negative one half w squared dw. You should be happy about that. This you should be happy about. Now, <clears throat> we're not there yet. We're not out of the woods yet. We still have to do some other things. Namely, uh, what is going on with this lower bound? So let me just draw a quick picture because you know how I like pictures? Who doesn't like pictures? I mean, if you don't like pictures, then you were never a kid. And we were all kids at one point. <laughs> all right, here's what I'm trying to say. Here's what I'm trying to say. This is absolutely this. What is this? Think about what this is here. This is, this is the probability. So first of all, W is a standard normal. I mean, replace W with Z is a standard normal variable. So this is the probability this is the probability that a standard normal variable w is greater than ln k minus mu minus v squared all over v. This is the probability w is some is greater than some number. Draw this number right here. This is my number. I don't even care where it is. I don't care what this number, I don't care what the value is, whatever. This is the value ln k minus mu minus v squared over v. I want the probability w is greater than that. I want this. This is the probability w is greater than that thing. But this is equal to, my point is this, throw a negative in front and then switch the inequality, it's the same. Remember that for any point here, for any point, the probability that w is greater than this thing, let me just say this, let me say this. For some point z, no, not z, let's use alpha, Probability w, where w is a standard normal variable greater than alpha is equal to the probability w is less than negative alpha because of the symmetry. I mean, this is an even function, right? Put negative alpha over here. If this is alpha, this is negative alpha. Then I get the area the other way. You should know this. I mean, this is elementary stuff. So look at what we have then. This last thing, this last thing I claim is equal to the following. This is equal to e to the mu plus one half v squared, the standard normal n evaluated at this, negative of that, at negative ln. If I run out of room, I'm going to be so mad. Damn it. Bear with me. Need room. So, this is equal to e to the mu plus one half v squared times the standard normal evaluated at negative ln k minus mu minus v squared all over v. Keep this in mind. Keep that in mind right there. That's, that's what we're going to work with right there. So keep in mind, I got, this was the numerator of the conditional expectation, and we got it all the way down to here. Now, there's something I want to say about this. There's something I want to say about that. So, 
Keep track of your results. This is what we have now. So now we've shown we've shown this so far. We just have shown that this quantity is equal to e to the mu plus one half v squared times the normal, the standard normal evaluated at negative ln k minus mu minus v squared all over v. Oh man. All right. What is that equal to? What is that equal to? Okay, I'm going to um, write something that you should know. Um, you are studying for exam MFE, which of course has become IFM. I'm taking the last sitting of MFE, but this is on the IFM exam as well. One thing you should know is what is D1? D1 by definition, by definition, D1 is equal to ln of the initial stock price, stock price times zero, divided by the strike plus the risk-free interest rate minus the continuous dividend yield minus one-half the volatility squared times T divided by the volatility square root T. My claim is this. My claim is that this is D1. I claim this is D1. And now that I think about it, when I wrote down the Black-Scholes formula to begin with, I didn't write what D1 was, but you should know that. I mean, D1 is, well, I'm writing it now. Here's D1. <laughs> so, how am I going to show this? How am I going to show this? I'm just going to manipulate that. I mean, basically, I'm not going to do anything fancy. Remember my definitions. I gave a definition of mu, and I gave a definition of d squared. So, so notice that negative, negative the whole thing, ln k minus. Now, what is mu? Mu is equal to ln s0, right, uh, plus r minus sigma uh, minus a half. Uh, sorry.